Um, today we'll be sharing some of the ways we're using Apollo and GraphQL technologies to deliver on Reddit's mission of bringing community, belonging, and empowerment to everyone in the world. Our first step in adopting GraphQL was to see if we could get it working with our iOS home feed. We prioritized migrating the home feed first to prove internally that GraphQL could work well for one of our most important and complex product services. And to power this, we built our first GraphQL gateway service around the open source Python language graphene library. We call this gateway service GraphQL Pi uh, internally, because it uses Python. The single gateway powered the first four years of our GraphQL journey at Reddit and successfully enabled us to fan out requests to our backend services. But as Reddit continued to grow and scale, even that gateway got unwieldy. Coordinating schema changes in a single system was no longer efficient or effective. So to address the challenges that come with a growing team and a growing monolith, we looked to GraphQL Federation. And our strategy for Federation was to scale and migrate our GraphQL deployment into Golang subgraphs for better performance and stability. To start the move to Federation, we added a gateway in between our clients and our monolith. So instead of reaching out directly to the monolith, our clients call the gateway. Then we started extracting subgraphs from the monolith and rewriting them in Golang for better performance. And this allows us to do this migration in pieces while abstracting away changes from the client and keeping development on our monolith unblocked. And eventually, this will lead us to retiring the monolith completely. And at that point, instead of the monolith supplying our schema, our schema is composed of all of those individual subgraphs. Using this federation strategy allows us to do a few things. It helped to keep our legacy Python stack unblocked while we migrate to highly performant Golang subgraphs. And it allowed our engineers to work in isolated units. It would have been really challenging to rewrite the monolith in one fell swoop. So tackling this migration in pieces was a much more manageable approach for our teams. We've also made a few adaptations to increase visibility and reliability for the GraphQL operations that we use in production. And one of the ways we do this is by monitoring query performance in production. Small changes to our GraphQL performance on certain APIs can make a really big difference to our users. So it's important that we have the adequate tooling to measure and monitor their operational behavior. Mobile networks are inherently spotty and unreliable. So a standard approach to that problem is to retry failed network requests. But if you go by the letter of the law, GraphQL requests shouldn't be retried because of how they work over the HTTP post verb. But most of the time, it's safe to retry queries, which are read-only. And since we started doing that, we've seen all kinds of reliability improvements. As one example, we were able to recover about a million feed loads per day that otherwise would have shown up as errors uh, to the user on the screen. So to make it work, we use OKHttp's OK tag API to uh, mark individual requests as retriable or not. Uh, so queries get tagged as retriable, and mutations get tagged as not retriable. In addition to our work on improving observability and reliability in production, we've built a number of product features using GraphQL that, as far as I know, are totally unique to Reddit. So if you haven't seen this before, r slash place is essentially crowdsourced art. Users can place a pixel within a time window of five minutes, and then they need to find each other in our communities to coordinate larger works out of those individual pixels. Um, but anyway, under the hood, this thing runs on GraphQL. Clients get updates about new pixel placements over GraphQL subscriptions. In this last time at our peak, uh, we did 6.63 .6 million GraphQL subscription events, uh, subscription events, which is a lot of GraphQL. Another uniquely Reddit product feature we've built using GraphQL is what we call presence. It's a collection of UI features that show which users are present on the site at any given time and how they're interacting with our content. We've also built similar features which show how many users are reading or responding to any given post at a given time. And we also now animate the upvote and downvote scores uh, on posts in real time depending on what other users are voting on the content you're looking at. 
So we've come a long way in our GraphQL journey. Since the fall of 2021, we've moved forward with GraphQL Apollo, improved latency, and migrated to Federation. But there's still more we want to do. The first is leveraging custom scalers. Apollo Kotlin supports this in addition to built-in scalar types, and we plan to utilize this for date-time object mapping. We're also exploring strategies to automatically detect unused fields in our client operations to keep our payloads concise and reduce latency. We're planning an upgrade to Apollo Kotlin 3 soon, which provides new and improved APIs for field nullability and asynchronous task management. And finally, we want to make it easier for our engineers to safely feature gate changes they make to our client GraphQL queries. We want to build tooling that empowers our teams to ship their client GraphQL changes to production quickly and safely. Um, thanks again. Thank you.